perhaps the hardest thing you can do with your iPhone camera is taking beautiful sharp photos at night and yet it still can be done and in this video I'm going to give you tips and techniques for doing exactly that. So by the end of this video you'll know not only how to take beautiful sharp iPhone photos in urban areas but you'll also know how to take beautiful iPhone photos of your friends and family in settings where there's practically no light and you'll still be able to capture photos so that you can memorize these moments that are important to you. Now, the reason iPhone night photography is so hard is primarily because the sensor size of the iPhone is small and it's much smaller than the sensor of larger DSLR cameras. And because of that, less light gets to reach the sensor and as a consequence, the iPhone performs worse at night than larger DSLR cameras. With that said, you can still do good photography with the iPhone at night and in this video I'm going to show you how it's done. Now the first thing I want you to realize about night photography is that there's no such thing as photography in complete darkness. So if you don't see anything, if there's no light, you cannot take a photo. And that's because your iPhone is essentially a light capturing device. So what a camera does is it essentially captures light and if there's no light, well then nothing can be captured and you can't take a photo. So even when we're talking about night photography, uh, we're not talking about photography in complete darkness. Instead, we're talking about how you can make the best use possible of the light that's available around you, or how you can add some light to the scene yourself using either the built-in flash of the iPhone or perhaps an external flash unit. So for the first part of this tutorial, we're going to walk around the city and we're going to seek out uh, illuminated subjects and sources of light in the city environment that we can use for night photography and in the process I'll show you exactly what you need to do in order to make sure that your night photos are beautiful and sharp and just to clarify when we're talking about night photography everything we're going to talk about also applies to low light photography so the techniques and the principles are the same even if it's not complete darkness when you're taking a photo and simply if it's a slightly darker than average scene, you can also use the techniques that you're going to discover in this video. As you walk around any urban area, what you'll discover is that there's a lot of illuminated subjects, a lot of beautiful buildings that are lit up. You'll find billboards, advertisements, uh, street signs and so on. And all of these can be used as uh, subjects for night photography. But there has to be some kind of light for you to be able to work with this scene. And if you look at this particular view, you'll see that uh, here we have the beautiful Oprah house and it has been nicely illuminated and it happens to be white uh, which works out great for the kind of photography we want to do. So right now I'm just going to turn to my iPhone and I'll explain a couple of key ideas or key techniques you need to use for uh, taking successful night photos. So first of all uh, when you look at a scene like this your instinct might tell you that you have to turn on the flash but that's just not the case. In fact we're going to go ahead and turn the flash off and the reason we're doing this is that the built-in flash of the iPhone is really weak and it can only illuminate your subjects if they're really close to you, like a few feet away. But for an Oprah house far away, the flash will just make no difference, so we're turning that off. Now, the other thing that's kind of counterintuitive about night photography is that in order to take a better, higher quality photo, what you really want to do is dial down the exposure a little bit. So for a scene like this, um, I want to make sure the exposure is set for the highlights, which happens to be the subject or the Oprah house. And in order to do that, I'm going to tap and hold my finger, which will set and lock exposure on the building, which is what I want. Now, your natural reaction might be to try to, you know, brighten up the photo so that you can see more. But what happens if you do that is that you'll see that the picture becomes really, really grainy and the sky, which should look black in night photos, if the sky is indeed black as it is right now, it becomes orange or gray and that tone is not natural and it doesn't look pleasing to the eye. 
So you don't want to bring the exposure up. And when you do this, what also happens is that the highlights become blown out, meaning that they're completely white and there's no information saved in the highlights. So what you want to do instead is actually reduce exposure just a little bit. You don't want to make the photo too dark because obviously you can make, you know, you can overdo this uh, adjustment. But we you want to dial down exposure just a tiny bit so that the highlights are nicely, beautifully exposed. Uh, and you want to make sure that the black tones in the photo are indeed black. So the black sky and surrounding areas should also appear black in the resulting image. And once we have that, uh, we can go ahead and take a photo. And what you'll notice here is that my iPhone is on a tripod and I'm doing that for a reason. And in low light photography, and especially night photography, it's really, really important that you keep your iPhone as steady as possible. Uh, the best way to do that, of course, is using a tripod. But if you don't have your tripod with you, you want to make sure you have a really firm grip of your iPhone or perhaps you want to support your hands against something that's not moving because the less you move your iPhone in low light photography, uh, the better your photos are going to work out. If your hands are shaking, the photos are going to end up blurry. There's another really good reason why you should reduce exposure when taking photos of illuminated subjects at night. And that relates to some of the more technical aspects of iPhone photography, namely the shutter speed and ISO. So what happens uh, when you reduce exposure is that the shutter speed becomes faster, uh, which means that you're less likely to get a blurred photo. And also the ISO value becomes lower, which means that the photo is less likely to become grainy. So by making your night photos a little bit darker, not only, they, not only do they look better, but you can also make sure that they're higher quality, less blurred out, and that there's less of a grain. So here's another example of the same idea. And if we look at the photo now, uh, we won't have any problems with uh, blur because the iPhone is on a tripod. However, you can definitely see some grain in the sky. And in general, we can improve this photo quite a bit simply if we uh, set exposure on the highlights and then dial it down a little bit. And in case you're wondering how much to decrease exposure, my guideline is really simple. I wanna make sure the black sky indeed appears black. And as long as that's happening, I don't really have to worry about anything else. So I don't want to reduce exposure too much because then we're losing detail in highlights and the bridge doesn't look so good. So I don't want to do that. But I wanna make sure that the black sky still appears black. And when that's happening, I know I can take a beautiful photo that will not have any unnecessary uh, grain. second part of this video, I want to spend some time discussing how you can take beautiful and perfectly sharp iPhone photos of your friends and family. And the best thing you can do in low light situations like this is to find some kind of light source that nicely illuminates your subject. For example, here, uh, we found this interesting light that's positioned just above the subject. And what we can use this light for is to nicely illuminate the subject and it creates this kind of spotlight effect where if we look at this scene, what's really happening is that we have this light illuminating the subject from the top and we can use this light to create an interesting creative photo that's also nice and sharp. And if you look at the screen of my iPhone now, uh, the first thing I want to do here is set focus accurately on the face of the subject. And what's happening here is that I want to make sure that I really get the focus right. And in low light situations, uh, the iPhone sometimes struggles with focus a little bit. So you want to look at the focus carefully and make sure it's set correctly, uh, which it is right now. So now that we've set focus, the next thing I want to do is play around with the exposure slider. And once again, if you reduce exposure, 
what happens is that you get a lower ISO value, which means that the photos are less grainy, and you also get faster shutter speed, which means that the photos are less likely to be blurred. So when you have that flexibility, you want to make the photos a little bit darker by reducing exposure, which is what I just did. So now, if we look at this scene, you'll see that all the light is coming pretty much from the top of the subject. And to take advantage of that, I'm going to ask my friend to actually look up. And if she does that, we can take this really interesting, really unique creative photo uh, in which parts of the subject's face are hidden in the shadows, which creates mystery. But also, because of the way the light uh, comes from the top, uh, the contour of the face is illuminated nicely. And we can also play around uh, with the framing a little bit. And perhaps we can try to include the light source in the photo itself. And if we do that, we get a different kind of look, which is nevertheless interesting for us. And now the viewer can really see and appreciate what's happening in the scene. So this way we can take a photo that's really creative, that looks nice and interesting, and that's also beautiful and sharp, even though there's practically no light in this dark tunnel where we're taking this photo. Occasionally, you may find yourself in a situation when there's just no light source you can use to illuminate your subject. And what do you do in these situations? Well, you, ha you have three options. The first option would be to just take a photo while the flash is turned off. And there's still some light in the scene, but no matter how we adjust exposure and no matter what we do here, uh, you'll see that uh, the scene is still kind of dark and we cannot really get a pleasing image because there's just not enough light to work with. So in a situation like this, turning on the built-in flash of the iPhone can be a good solution. So we're going to do that, and for that, I'm going to tap on the flash icon, and I'm going to turn flash on. Now, the thing to remember with flash on the iPhone is that it only works if your subject is relatively close. So if your subject or subjects are within a few feet from you, then that's a good time to use the built-in flash of the iPhone. So what we can do now is try to take another photo, and this time uh, the flash is going to turn on. So if we look at the photos we just took, um, here we can see the photo without flash, and we can clearly see that the subject, subject is kind of dark. And here we have the subject brightly illuminated using the built-in flash of the iPhone. The problem we have though is that if we look at the iPhone itself, you'll see that the flash is located right next to the camera lens. And what this means is that uh, essentially the light originates from the exact same angle from which the photo is taken. And as a result, when we look at the photos we take using the built-in flash of the iPhone, what ends up happening is that the face of the subject is going to look flat. So there are no shadows of any kind on the face. And the way it's illuminated makes the subject appear kind of uh, a little bit lifeless and you don't really see any shadows on their face and also the light that the flash produces is often not flattering to the subject. Uh, fortunately there is a solution you can use and that solution is using an external flash unit. So the one I'm going to use is called Nova Flash and I happen to like this one a lot but there are different manufacturers who make similar uh, flash units or you could perhaps even experiment with a small flashlight if you don't have one of these external flash units. And the way this works is that uh, I actually need to open uh, an app to use this flashlight, and that's Nova Camera App. And that's because uh, this little flash unit connects to my phone using Bluetooth. So initially I have to pair it, and once it's been paired once, then every time I open the app, uh, the iPhone automatically connects to the flash unit and you can see that there's a blue light shining there which means the flash unit is connected. And then, once I've done that, what I then need to do is position the flash unit at a small angle. And typically the best way to do this is to essentially position the flash unit up and a little bit to one side. So 
That's kind of like what I'm doing now. And so what I'll have to do now is uh, take, take a photo and you'll see that as I hit the shutter button, the flash unit will light up and a photo is then taken. So let me try again just to be sure. And you can of course vary the angle uh, where you position the flash unit and this will get different results depending on where you position it. So if we now look at the photos we've taken uh, using the Nova flash unit, uh, you'll see that compared to the photos that we took using the built-in flash, uh, the subject looks much better and the shadows on the subject's face uh, add an extra depth to the image. And in general, uh, the subject looks more flattering and you can take more beautiful, more natural portrait photos in low light situations using a flash unit such as the Nova flash. So that concludes this video. Uh, I hope you'll find these techniques useful. It can be a bit challenging to take uh, beautiful and sharp photos with your iPhone at night, but it can certainly be done as long as you know how to uh, illuminate your photos correctly and how you can work with the light you have available in order to create the kind of photos that you'll be happy to share with your friends and family. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got a lot of value out of it. Now there's so much more I'd like to tell you about iPhone photography and while I didn't hold anything back, there's only so much I could share with you in a short video like this. And that's why I've recorded an entire video course about taking incredible photos with your iPhone. So if you'd like to find out more about my full iPhone photography course, you'll find more information right under this video. So take a look at my full iPhone photography course and I hope to see you there.